we are heading to Gari, also known as Fraser Island, which will involve two nights camping and seeing all of the most amazing sights on the island. So blue. I've just been sitting in this spot watching this small section of river and one, maybe two platypus keep coming up to the surface. It's amazing to see them, they're so rare. We're James and Amy, and we recently quit our jobs to travel for a year. A bit rainy. After spending three months in New Zealand, we're now in Australia. Join us as we road trip up the East Coast, from Sydney to Cairns. We've just arrived at our campsite in Rainbow Beach and parked up in this really nice spot under these trees. We're staying at a Big Four campsite and this park has a massive wooded area at the back of it and you can basically park wherever you want so it feels like you've got loads of space. So yeah, we're just making our lunch now and then we're going to head into Rainbow Beach. Amy's making summer rolls again. These are so good when it's hot. just come for a walk down Rainbow Beach. It's a very nice beach and it's super long, but it's very windy. We can see the multicolored cliffs in the distance though, which is very cool. But we're gonna be back in a few days and hopefully we can see them up close. Good morning. We just woke up at our campsite in Rainbow Beach and today we are heading to Gari a sand island off the coast of Rainbow Beach, also known as Fraser Island. We're booked onto a three-day tour with Pippi's Gari Adventures, which will involve two nights camping and seeing all of the most amazing sights on the island. So I am really excited. So we're just gonna get packed up now, and then we're gonna head into town where we're gonna meet the tour group and catch the ferry to Fraser Island. As the world's biggest sand island, driving on Gari is only possible with four-wheel drive, so our tour provided us with a fleet of 4x4s which we would use to get around the island. After a short briefing, we caught the ferry across to the island and experienced our first time driving on sand. After about 30 minutes of off-road driving, we headed inland to our first stop. Lake Mackenzie is a freshwater lake in the centre of Fraser Island. It's the world's largest perched lake, meaning it's filled entirely by rainwater. Essentially, it's the world's biggest puddle. So blue. It's famous for its crystal clear blue water, which is due to the pure white silica sand acting as a natural water filter and was unlike any lake we'd ever seen. So this is Lake Mackenzie, which is a huge freshwater lake, and it's so nice. This water is so blue. It's so weird tasting the water and it being fresh water. It looks like it should be salty. After leaving Lake Mackenzie, 
we climbed a sand dune near our campsite to watch the sunset. The next day, we drove to Eli Creek, a natural lazy river that pours up to 4 million litres of fresh water into the ocean every hour. Don't crash. We grabbed some floats and drifted down the stream to the sea. Champagne Falls, and it's called that because behind me there, the waves crash over the rocks, form these bubbles over the top that looks like a glass of champagne. Is it gonna do it right now? No. <laughs> oh, this is what it looks like. After leaving the champagne pools, we passed a pack of wild dingoes, one of around 25 to 30 packs living on the island. We ended our final night in Fraser Island with beers on the beach while enjoying another incredible sunset. So after leaving Fraser Island, we continued on our way up the east coast and we stopped in Bundaberg, which is where we are now. And we are here basically for one reason. This is the biggest nesting ground for turtles on the east coast of Australia. So we came to Mon Repos Turtle Centre and booked on a tour to go and see turtles hatching at night. We just got back from the tour now and it was amazing. We were taken down to the beach to go and watch a nest hatching. And while we were waiting, another nearby nest hatched and there were hundreds of turtles all around us. And then eventually our nest did hatch and we followed the turtles as they went down into the sea. We weren't actually able to film anything as it would have distracted the turtles, but I was able to film a tiny bit when one of the rangers held a turtle up just to show us what it looked like up close. So that was really cool. Yeah, we just finished that now, and now we're going to head back to our campsite. But that was very cool. I highly recommend coming here if you do get a chance. The other thing to do in Bundaberg is visit the Bundaberg Brewery, where they make the famous ginger beer. So we just came to the Bundaberg Barrel and did a drinks tasting. This one is summer in a bottle for me. The colour, the flavour, the smell, it is all passion fruit. Just no crunchy seeds in it. And as part of the tour, we got to pick our six favourites to take away with us, which is really cool. Ooh, here are my six, and Amy picked six as well. 
So if you're in Bundaberg, it's a good way to spend an hour. We left Bundaberg and began the long drive north towards Yungala National Park. It would take almost eight hours, so rather than doing it all in one day, we decided to split the drive across two days and spend another night in a free rest area. We've been making our way north to Yungala National Park and last night we decided to stay in this rest area off the side of the A1. There are rest areas similar to this all the way through Queensland and what's cool about them is they've got all the amenities of a campsite. So they've got water, a barbecue, toilets, some of them even have showers, but they're completely free to use. So if you stay less than 20 hours, you can use this to basically rest and recover on a long journey, which is what we've done. So this is where we were parked. We had a camper here and an RV here, but otherwise not too busy. There's a table over there where we had our dinner. And then they've also got toilets over there and drinking water. So everything you need. We're now going to get back on the road and start making our way to Yungala, where we're hoping to see platypus. So we didn't learn from our failed attempts to see koalas and came all the way to this place called Broken River in Yungala National Park to try and see platypus and thankfully we did. There's actually one right in front of me there that Amy's filming. We've just been sitting in this spot watching this small section of river and one, maybe two platypus keep coming up to the surface probably about once a minute for breath after they feed down along the bottom and it's just so amazing. They're a lot smaller than I expected. They're only like, how big would you say they are? Like guinea pig size, yeah, only about guinea pig size. But it's amazing to see them, they're so rare. We were kind of expecting not to see anything and to see them within our first half an hour here. Okay, it's got really close now. So that's been happening pretty much every minute and they're getting closer and closer each time. So cool. definitely worth coming all the way here just to see the platypus so I'm glad we decided to do it and didn't get too disheartened by not seeing the koalas We left Yungala and started making our way to Airlie Beach, the gateway to one of the most popular sites on the east coast, the Whitsunday Islands. This here is Whitehaven Beach, which many people call the best beach in the world. And you can kind of see why. The water is crystal clear and the sand is so soft. It's taken five weeks, but we've finally seen our first wild koalas. And we saw two of them. So good. We've just taken the ferry to Magnetic Island. And right now we're on our way to go and see some rock wallabies which hang out on the beach. 